Hi, this is episode 97 of Krondos. I'm your host, Jordan Hudgens. I'm a Ruby dev and the CTO of the DevCamp platform. Whether you're new to programming or you've been at it for years, practice is important. The more you practice your programming skills, the better you're going to be. You have various options to practice programming techniques, and I want to walk through a few key ones. It'll help you brush up, improve, and be able to stay sharp as a developer. Starting out this list of five recommendations is pair programming. Programming does not have to be a solitary activity. Instead of taking every single project on by yourself, engage in pair programming. Since pair programming has people working together from a single computer, it's a great way to learn different strategies for tackling problems and approaching the process. This type of practice will quickly make you a better programmer as long as you choose a good partner. If you have any kind of relationship with an experienced senior developer or anything like that, you can pair up with them, work on a project together, and you'll be shocked at how quickly you learn new best practices, new frameworks, or new languages. Second on the list is by working on open source software projects. Open source software is a great way to practice your programming techniques. Starting off, you don't have to build a gem or a framework or anything like that. You can start off nice and easy by simply reading code from various open source projects. For example, if you're wanting to learn how the Rails framework works, or you want to see how Ruby can be used, go and look at the Rails open source software project on GitHub. You will find all kinds of amazing techniques that they use to implement some cool features. This type of approach is going to let you understand how programs are managed so that you can create your own successful project. And after you have gone through and seen how other open source projects are built, then you can participate in your own. You can build your own gem and you can work through various projects. People are going to give you immediate feedback when you do this. It might be kind of hard to hear the criticism in the beginning, but I promise you it's like you're getting free code critiques and it's going to help you be a better developer, not just on that open source project, but on everything else you're going to do. Next on the list is the daily programmer section of Reddit. This subreddit posts three programming challenges each week. The first challenge is pretty easy and then they increase in difficulty with each successive one. The community reviews the solutions and provides feedback. You can use this subreddit to improve your skills while also having a little bit of fun. Like the open source project, make sure that you have some tough skin because some of the developers are going to be a little bit rough, if, especially if you're new. They're going to look at your code and they may say, well, that's actually a horrible implementation. And if you're sensitive, then you may never want to do it again. However, if you truly want to improve, you'll take that criticism and you'll go and you'll apply it to your next project and you'll be able to make great strides in how you're building applications. Next on the list are online courses from sites such as Udemy or Coursera. Sometimes it helps to go back to school to brush up on your programming skills. However, in our modern times, you can use these massive online courses, also called MOOCs, as a way of doing that for a very, very minimal cost, and you're going to get some great practical tips out of it. You can learn at your own pace, and you can practice the techniques that you need to work on without being rushed. And best of all, you can get feedback during the course from other students and from the instructor. If you follow Krondos, then you may or may not have some of my courses on Udemy, but in the show notes I'll place some links to those if you're interested in learning from those. Last on this list are code katas. The term kata was introduced by David Thomas in his book The Pragmatic Programmer. He borrowed it from martial arts and applied it to the programming world. In order to work with code katas, you need to take small requirements and then create the code. Then you do it over and over again and you improve it until it's perfect. This is an easy way to practice coding while also working on best practices. Don't make the mistake of thinking that you do not need to practice programming or once you've built a feature then you're pretty much done. You don't have to worry about it until the next time where that feature is a requirement. You should practice as often as possible. You can leverage these recommendations to practice programming techniques and improve your skills so that you can take your career or your hobby to the next level.